Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about, I guess, most awaiting topic. Uh, everyone has asked for the API penetration test. Uh, we have covered uh, like the episode one, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago on the perp and the postman, how to configure the API uh, on the on like how to capture the API request on perp using the postman. Uh, in this video. Uh, in this series, I want to start with like you know the basics of the API, and then slowly we're gonna talk about uh, like you know we'll take examples of the various attacks, or how you like you know perform those attacks on the APIs, and we'll deep dive into it. So in this episode, we're just gonna see the basics of the API. Uh, we'll see some test cases. We'll see the approach, uh, like you know what do you need, which tool do you need, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, to start with, uh, what's the API, right? So we have two types of API, REST and a POST. Uh, the REST uh, uses the HTTP protocol, and then these APIs are stateless. So be it REST or so, it's a stateless uh, version, while the web application are uh, indeed stateful, right? Uh, you have the session cookie in the browser, uh, which maintains the state, while in the APIs there are no state. So that's a critical thing to remember. Uh, the SOAP is a protocol. Uh, so SOAP was designed with a specification, and uh, I must have, like you know, you must have seen the WSDL file, WSDL file, which has all the required information on what the web service does in addition to the location of the web service. So uh, all the functions and capabilities, everything uh, is included in the WSDL file. Um, so that's the difference between the REST, SOAP, and web. Now our, our topic, or probably our series, is for mostly going to focus on the REST API because that's the most popular. I guess out of 100, like 1,000 pen tests I would do, like 990 would be REST API. So we're not going to touch much on the SOAP. Uh, so now if we talk about the REST, it can use like, you know, uh, different methods. And these are just some of the most standard ones like uh, get, post, put, and delete. Uh, it, one can also use like an update. Uh, one can also uh, use like a put instead of post. So there are several ways. Uh, there are several methods that one can use, but these are the most standard methods being used by the uh, REST APIs. Uh, the response is uh, mostly going to be JSON. Uh, I would say like uh, sometimes I have seen a response in the XML, but that's very rare. Uh, so the structure parameters and the uh, response uh, are in the JSON or the XML, uh, and like you know, it may be in the request body, it may be in the response body, and this is required like to communicate in the machine useful information. And sometimes uh, this uh, API is also used like you know a custom authentication rather than what we have seen in the web frameworks like using the ASP.NET or PHP session ID or GA session ID. Uh, they use their own token. Uh, however, uh, JWT, uh, JSON web, web Token, has been the most popular one among the uh, developers uh, while using. So when you are doing the API penetration test, make sure you also, also understand what the JSON Web Token is. And JWT.io is a useful link when you have to encode or decode any web token. Uh, that's a good resource. I'll, I'll put the link in the description so you can go and play play around yourself. All right, what should be your approach uh, when someone asks you and say, uh, do the penetration test on the APIs, right? One thing uh, you definitely want to ask is the documentation. Uh, so every API has to have a documentation. Uh, maybe it's a public API, maybe it's a private API, but all the time when the user wants to use this API, they need the documentation to figure out how do they call APIs, uh, what's the expected response. Uh, so uh, f for the same reason, when you're uh, doing the penetration test, you want to see how is the API documentation. It will tell you this is the uh, like you know endpoint of the API, and these are the request parameters that it accepts, whether it's a POST request or a GET request or a PUT request and then what do you expect in the response body. So uh, the API documentation will cover everything. Generally, what I ask uh, my clients to do is to provide like a Postman collection that's 
pretty much like you know saves my day because instead of reading through the document and importing that into the postman i would rather just import and uh, and postman is very popular too like um, all of the testers or the developers use that so you can easily get that collection and you easily import into the postman and now boom you can connect with the burp which we saw in the previous video uh and then you can do automated scan you can do manual scan uh you can do all sort of things next you uh, need to decide the scope uh the scope would be like you know how many apis you have generally uh, get request uh, or the get uh, methods uh, requires less of a, less of a burden like you can try injection attacks but that those are does not change any database right that does not change any state or that does not give you any right to uh, make updates to the database so that's why you are not much concerned about the get request but you definitely want to see how many mutable APIs you have. When I say mutable, it's something like post, put, update, delete, which could change the state of the application, which could change or add, modify values into the database. So that's why it's a, uh, like, you know, you want to determine what the scope is going to be. Sometimes a uh, client would say, okay, these are the uh, APIs we have, uh, maybe version 2 or version 1. And when you actually try and enumerate, you might, able to see oh there's an older version api is still supported and then you could exploit that as well because then they might not have same controls so uh decide what the scope is uh the next thing is uh this is going to be a big help and we will cover in detail each or each and every task cases from the oas api with the demonstration uh, i'll try my best to demonstrate each and every vulnerability so uh, just like the web top 10, we have the API top 10 as well. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and they released, I believe, last year. So it's fairly recent, but of course very much required. Uh, so this is going to be a good help for anyone looking to find a good framework to perform the API penetration testing and vetting the client. So uh, I'm also going to include that link in the description, so definitely check that out. Uh, tools. Uh, this is uh, very critical, right? Uh, uh, now, as far as tools go, I know most of the automated scanners like IBM AppScan or the uh, Rapid7 or the Sensic, everyone has this API scanning capability. But of course, the one tool which I trust the most is the Burp. Uh, be it community addition or the professional, uh, Burp is the far uh, best tool when you are testing API because these are going to be a lot of manual test cases which cannot be automated. And then we have also seen like, you know, Postman is going to be a very, very useful tool because uh, uh, just a few weeks ago we saw in the tutorial how you can uh, uh, configure Burp with the uh, Postman. I'm also linking that video into this description below. So if you are not aware of that, uh, probably check that out. So you, uh, in the future, when you're trying to do the penetration test of the APIs, you can know how to connect Burp with the Postman. All right. Uh, next thing we're gonna tackle, take a look at the test cases. Uh, there are like, you know, what are the standard test cases? Like I know with the APIs, there are just thousands of different attacks. And we have seen some of those in the previous videos, like subdomain takeover, cross site request forgery, course, and most of the web vulnerabilities are applicable to the APIs, but then you there are all uh, there are many specific, and then that you would see in the OWASP API top ten. There are very specific which are only applicable to the API top ten. Uh, so one thing you wanna see is look for the abnormal HTTP headers. Uh, like you know, this would be many times be uh, like you know header based parameters, and uh, that's why like you know you wanna see if it's using any. Uh, abnormal headers. Uh, as I said, like APIs does not use cookie for authentication, so uh, the authentication also is in the header. All right. So the next one uh, we have is the authentication. Uh, as I said, like authentication would be a big piece for APIs because in the web, once you pass the login screen, you are authenticated. But with the APIs, let's say there are thousand APIs, then each API has to fall, has to do authentication, right? So it's it's not like you do authentication for one API and the rest of the API can be unauthenticated, nope. So when you're doing API penetration, make sure each and every API uh, is authenticated, otherwise that's a big, big, big risk uh, to any anyone. 
uh, and sometimes as I said, like you know, they are also using uh, custom authentication, so that's why it becomes even more uh, vulnerable. And then sometimes you might have uh, older API which supports authentication, and that might not have same controls with the newer API version. So versioning also a big thing in the APIs because every time you have a change, they generate a new version of the API while the old one should be deprecated. If sometimes it does not, then it leads to a bigger exploitation. The next one is the indirect object reference. Uh, this one is, I think, in the OWASP API top 10, but it's definitely on the web top 10. Uh, object level authorization check should be considered in every function that access a data source using user input. Uh, I'll, I'll do a separate, I guess, video on what the indirect object reference vulnerability is uh, to deep dive. But yeah, you, this is something you want to definitely check in uh, for each and every API. SSRF, uh, we recently, I guess last week we covered, or the few weeks ago we covered the SSRF server-side request forgery. This is different than the cross-site request forgery. Uh, but here you want to make sure, uh, like, you know, uh, the API does not allow a user to mutate the server-side resources. So that's, again, a good one to check for. Uh, next we have the XML attacks. Uh, if the API is supposed to JSON, then try, like, you know, changing the content type from application JSON to XML and see if, like, you know, if it responds to the uh, XML request and throw some error, then maybe you can try XML entity attacks, uh, which we will see in the future in detail what, what that is. But that's again on the OWASP top 10 list on A4, I guess. Uh, DAWs, this is a uh, unique thing. I wouldn't say unique thing, but this is one thing you definitely want to check for is whether the API uh, has a throttling enabled. Uh, so when I say throttling, what it means is you want to limit how many times a user can request uh, or make a request to the API. What if, like, you know, somebody's running uh, like an intruder of burp? Uh, and, and sending like a, I don't know, uh, thousands of requests per second, it would exhaust the resources and, and can lead to denial of service. So make sure you have some sort of throttling implemented, maybe by code, maybe by using AWS API Gateway, but you should have some protection in place. Last but not the least, the injection tax we have seen uh, uh, injection attacks all over the place, like for the web. So same thing, you want to make sure uh, you want to uh, try the same uh, sort of injection attacks on the APIs, uh, be it SQL injection, XML injection, and trick like, you know, uh, the interpreter to execute unintended commands without proper authorization. So these are some high-level test cases which I would like you to uh, focus on uh, on the API pen test, but definitely uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take each and every test case, we'll look into details, we'll exploit each and every vulnerability, I'll demonstrate that to you, so uh, it becomes very familiar how to uh, pen test the APIs. And uh, if you have any suggestion, if you have any comments, uh, like, you know, if you have any experience, feel free to uh, drop me a comment, that would be a big help. Also, uh, follow the cybersecurity Facebook page. Uh, that's uh, like you know where we post some interesting articles. If I come across, and then also updates to our weekly episodes and everything. So uh, be sure to follow that and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, that's all from this video. Uh, I'll come up with the uh, episode three uh, as soon as I can. Until then, I'll, I'll see you guys next Monday uh, with an interesting topic. Bye.